My name is David Margulies. I'm a member of the technical staff at Franz Incorporated, as Steve said. And uh, today uh, we're talking more about features of the IDE, which is the integrated development environment available with Allegro Common Lisp on uh, Windows, Linux, and, um, and now available on the Mac. And we're going to talk about the object editor and the class grid, which are two tools um, which are uh, useful for making a user interface to um, display uh, information about classes and instances of classes which you want to present to your users. Um, so these are basically uh, the topics we're going to cover. What are the object editor and the class grid? When are they useful? How do you create them? How do you customize them? And um, also a tool, the class interface editor, which is used uh, precisely in the creation and customization of, of the object editor and the class grid. Now, the examples we're going to use come from uh, the document um, whose uh, URL is given there. It's one of our uh, common graphics documents, so it's in the CG directory of the doc directory, and uh, it's CG object editor and class grid dot htm. And that has a long worked out example, which uh, basically we'll be using. And the example code itself is available in the 8.2 distribution. Everything I'm talking about here is 8.2, although some of the features are available in 8.1. Um, but to be sure that you have everything I'm talking about, you should be running uh, 8.2. Now, the object editor in the class grid um, display information about uh, class instances and the slot values associated with them. The, there is a database product available uh, with the Allegro common list called Allegro Cache, um, which stores uh, class <coughs> definitions and instances. And these tools were originally created as an interface to uh, that database. Um, however, they can be used with any classes. They don't have to be uh, connected to the database or stored in the database. Um, the reason that uh, th that database is useful is that the, it's a persistent database, so anything you store there is available uh, even when you stop running Lisp and then restart it later. Um, so that's why it's useful when uh, doing examples, but as I say, this will work with any class, any instances. And the example which is uh, in that document is a set of medical patients uh, with a series of slots um, defining their name and uh, uh, other details about them. Uh, it, it is, of course, a made-up example, so it doesn't have anything to do with real medical databases, but it's a useful one. and. That we're going to be looking, there's a class of patients and a series of instances that are created, and that's what we're going to be using. So just to <coughs> show you right away what we're talking about, um, here is a class grid. Now, you may be familiar with the grid widget, uh, which is a powerful um, matrix display uh, tool um, available in Common Graphics. And the class grid is simply a specialized form of this, um, customized in order to show class instances and slots. Uh, and so here we see um, the, uh, a class grid, and the slots are first name, family name, a slot called access, um, a birth date, um, this being a medical example, there's an unpaid balance. There's a checkbox as to whether the patient is considered friendly by the staff. Um, there's the favorite color. There's the best friend, etc. cetera. Um, and we have uh, seven uh, instances, patient instances, that are listed. Now we're going to go through these details um, later. And in fact, in just a few slides, we're going to 
uh, move to a running list and actually show how to build these things. Uh, so uh, you'll get uh, a practical example rather than just slides. Um, the other uh, tool that we're talking about is called the Object Editor. And it is very similar to the class grid in the sense that here are displayed um, patient instances and all the slots, except each slot has a um, widget associated with it. In the class grid, it just has a column and a grid. But here, there's a widget, and um, there are also a bunch of uh, buttons which allow you to uh, move among the instances um, that are available and also allow you to make modifications, save them, revert to earlier versions, create new instances, and so on, a whole bunch of buttons uh, along the bottom and the top that allow a user to provide an interface to the database. The idea is that this uh, dialog would be part of your user interface, and you have controlled what slots are displayed and what the user can do with them. So that um, if this were the accounting department, they, the way you displayed it to them, <clears throat> you might just give them access to the unpaid balance and maybe the first and last name, um, but not the uh, um, various uh, other slots, which are, and, and not the uh, medications, which would be in charge of the medical staff. So again, both tools display uh, instances of classes, a selected subset of slots. The class grid is simple and quick. It does not easily display complex uh, slot values. The object editor um, is uh, much more powerful, um, but anything that's more powerful is also more complicated. And the idea of both tools is they serve as user interfaces to data. Um, now, there's another tool called the Class Interface Editor, and uh, it's a dialog which comes up while you are designing a form or a dialog. Um, and so it's not something that your users would see, but it's something that you use to assist in, um, in creating uh, these um, dialogues and, and widgets. It can be used either with the class grid or an object editor, and it facilitates selecting slots, and we'll see it working um, very soon. Uh, the important thing to realize about the class interface editor is that it is used in the um, IDE's project system. Now, the project system is the IDE's application builder, and you specify or create windows and dialogues in projects using a specialized window called a form. And the class interface editor assists in designing these forms. Um, so if you're not using the project system, you can't use the class interface editor because uh, it's designed to be part of the project system. So um, if you're not using the project system, then you create class grids and object editors programmatically um, mimicking, um, well, you can write them from scratch. But what I usually do is just find some good example code that's close to what I want, and then I copy it and modify it um, uh, in order to be exactly what I want. So um, here's the class interface editor as it would be displayed for um, creating an object um, uh, editor, and this is where we're going to go off and actually just look at some uh, examples in a running list. And so if I can find, there we go. So here is a um, running list, which I hope you can see. There's sort of a bunch of windows. Um, I just have the um, Allegro help open to um, the document I mentioned, creating an object editor dialog in a class grid. And if we just, let's see, let me show a different window here. View, editor. And here is the actual code. And this is an annoying um, 
editor. Um, and I just wanted to show you. Uh, so we go up here. Those are medications. I want to just get to the um, patients. Yeah, so here is the um, definition of the class patient. And here are a bunch of slots that are defined, last name, first name, access, date of birth, unpaid balance, and so on. And if we come down here, we have a variable called star patient star, which is a bunch of instances of patients. So let's uh, start out by creating a class grid. Now, we have a project set up here. <coughs> Excuse me. We um, don't have anything in it yet, but we're now going to create a form. So we just do new form. And for the class grid, the class grid is a widget, so it's going to appear on a dialog. That's typically where widgets appear. And so here is our new form. And if we move it over here, now if we click on this, we get the widget palette, which has appeared up there slightly obscured by the title bar. But here is the class grid. Um, and if we click on that and then click on the form here, there is um, a class grid. Now, this has just come up. This is sort of the default in it. Um, actually has something filled in there. If we look at the inspector on the class grid and look at the edited class, it's called test person. That's just a uh, dummy class that was created in order that there be something in the class grid. That's not what we want. What we want is patient. So let's change that to patient. And now you notice that it's uh, starting to list um, those slots, which I showed you in the code. Now, if we um, click a right button click over the class grid, we can bring up the um, class interface editor. And here it is. I showed you a picture of this on the slide. As I'll point out later, this is slightly different <coughs> from what appeared on the slide um, because the class, what we saw on the slide was the editor for an object editor, uh, which we'll get to shortly. But this is for a class grid, which is somewhat simpler. So the first thing you can see is here are all the slots of the patient class, access, best friend, date of birth, and so on. And at the moment, none of them are um, selected. But let's just start picking some. When you click on a slot here, this widget on the right um, becomes live. And it's asking you whether you want to include this on your class grid or not. So let's include that one. And let's include date of birth. And favorite color, why not? And first name. And last name. And static note. All right, so um, let's uh, just start out and see what this makes. So we uh, notice that here are the slots listed up there, but they're not actually listed in the order that we might want them. Let's go back to the class grid, I mean the uh, editor interface. There's a button here that says <coughs> move the included slots to the top. It just rearranges things. So here are all the included ones. They're actually printed in bold. I don't know how well you can see that, but everything from best friend down to static note. Now, what order do we want them in? Let's do first name first. So let's move that to the top. And then last name. One more. There we go. And then date of birth. And let's leave the other things um, as they are. So uh, let's look at this. So there we have first name. Now let's test this by running this form. Um, <coughs> so we don't save things. All right, there we are, but it isn't displaying anything. In order to get it to display something, we have to um, uh, set its value, which is currently 
uh, nil. And the easiest way to do that is to choose Get Component from the Tools menu and just click over the uh, object. And what did we get? Yes, there we go, Class Grid. So first of all, let's get a variable that's equal to that, that has uh, the class grid as a value. Now let's set f value cg1 to be patience. There we go. And let's go back to our, ha, let's figure out where this is, window. So form one, there we go. So here we have, um, now it's filled in the names with our instances. Um, and if we go through, we see, well, let's see if everything looks OK. The first name is OK. The last name is OK. The birth date seems to be doing OK. Ah, the best friend, um, we're not um, actually well, that's not the way we want it. That doesn't mean anything. And also the favorite color, uh, you notice, is um, is a keyword. And uh, the static note um, looks OK. So let's stop running the form and go back. Let's display form one again and look a little bit more at the editor. So. Um, which were the ones the best friend? So the widget here, it's a, in the widget box over here, it says include, and there's a data type. And here are all the different data types you can have. And in fact, best friend is another patient. So it's actually a class instance. So instead of uh, just being, um, instead of just being, uh, something uh, like a string. So once you say it's a class instance, it asks what kind of class, and the answer is patient. Um, and what was the other one? We Oh, favorite color. Um, let's also do class instance for that. And oh, not class instance, sorry. Uh, let's try. Uh, Static text. So let's see how that works. Um, all right, so let's try running this again. There's run form. And once again, we have to set the uh, get component. And so we're going to make the variable the value of that. We're going to set f, uh, make the value to be the patients. And now let's go back and find our window again. And um, that's, sorry, that's the wrong one. There we go. Uh, so, well, that was, we still have the favorite color displaying not the way we want, but, um, Let's go back. We did fix up the best friend. Uh, the best friend is now listed correctly. And you notice it's now turned into a drop-down box where you can specify a different um, value. Now, by the way, if we change these values, um, the changes would actually go into the uh, database. So this, this is sort of an act. It's not only displaying. Um, but we could have, when we um, specified the details, we could have specified it as something that the user can't change. Uh, but So let's stop running that. Um, and now I'm going to uh, create a new form um, and show the object creating an object editor. So now this time, here are the choices for the uh, new form. There are various windows. There's dialog, which we used in order to show the class grid. But there's also object editor. And so that's the one we're going to pick. An object editor is itself a dialog. It's a predefined dialog. Now, 
if you're doing an object editor, it has to know what class it wants it wants you to edit. And it's listed a bunch of classes here, medication, prescription, patient, um, uh, and those are the classes it knows about. And you can also specify another class, which will and then ask you what it is. You can even specify a class that does not, does not yet exist, but you obviously have to define it at some point. So we want it to be patients. So um, we select patient. And here's the form. And you may be thinking, well, gosh, there's nothing on that. That doesn't look like an object editor. And that's because we have to actually um, start telling uh, what we want. So again, we hit the Right button menu and over the uh, form here. And we choose Edit Class Interface in order to get the Class Interface Editor. And there it is. So again, what is it? We Here are the slots that are available. And um, so again, let's uh, include, uh, well, let's include best friend, date of birth, favorite color, first name, last name, prescriptions, and static note, and unpaid balance, a whole bunch of them. So let's just see what we got here. Well, OK, that looks more like a, uh, a form. It's got a bunch of buttons. And like the class grid, we've just got a bunch of slots here. Um, let's try, I mean, it, it looks like a class grid in the sense that it's just a list of things. And um, so let's try running this form and just see what comes up. So don't save it. And it thinks for a while. And um, so best friend, again, it's just giving some printed version of that. The date of birth looks OK. Favorite color looks OK. First name, last name. Prescriptions, again, it we're just seeing, um, it's, it's sort of hard to see on the left here, but this is just a, uh, a list. We can see the closing parenthesis and a printed representation of an instance. Um, and finally, static note, um, it's um, being cut off. And there are a whole bunch of buttons. So that's not quite what we want. We want to. Um, do something about the best friend to make it the right kind of thing, something about the static note, and something about the prescriptions. And we probably want to reorganize this a bit um, and get the first name and the last name at the top. So let's do that. We stop uh, running, and we, um, again, bring up the class grid. So first of all, let's move all included slots to the, stop, to the top. Now let's move first name to the top, and last name next. Now, let's look at best friend. Again, this is supposed to be an instance of a class, because it's another patient. The best friend is always a patient. So we come down to class instance, and we have to tell it what kind of class. It's a patient. Now, um, prescriptions. Um, I didn't go through the definition of prescriptions, but Basically, the um, prescription sh slot, the value should be a list of medications. And we do have a medication um, uh, class. And so let's go over here for the choices. And we actually want a table of class instances. Um, and again, that should be prescription. And um, I'm going to explain what these uh, little arrows are in a second. But let's just do static note. And one of the choices is um, static text multiline. That looks about right. So let's look at what that looks like. And um, again, it's rearranged things. Um, and uh, it's got a area for prescriptions. And 
things aren't tremendously well arranged. I mean, the way I design dialogues, and probably the way you do too, is you keep trying things, and then you see what has to be fixed. So let's just run this quickly uh, and just see what it looks like. There is more work to do. And um, all right, so the prescriptions is sort of OK. The static note seems to have got buried somewhere. Uh, the best friend is correct. Um, but notice this is the old order, and still got a bunch of buttons, and there's nothing being displayed in the um, prescription. So we've got to work on both of those. So again, we bring up the um, editor. Now, there's a button down here saying, redo entire widget layout. And that actually takes these rearrangements we've done and redoes them. Unless you click that, it will assume that the layout you have is correct, which isn't um, uh, which it, which isn't uh, right. Now let's look at um, prescriptions, and let's look at this little button here. Prescriptions is saying that since this is a class, we here are the potential classes, and what prescriptions are medications. Um, so we want to include the medications. Um, see, here are the slots of prescription, medication, patient, and refills. Well, we don't need patient because we already, this is part of patient. That's just a reference back to the, um, the instance which, for which the, this is the prescription slot. Um, and refills, well, we don't care about that at the moment. But medication is itself a class. So it's a class instance. And it's an instance of medication. And OK, so we've done redo entire widget layout. So let's give it a whirl and see what happens. And there, you notice that we now have, um, it now says medication. We have first name, last name in the right order. Best friend is going to be, as before, a drop-down list, uh, date of birth, favorite color. Um, and uh, the static note is moved down here, so there's room to display it. All right, let's give this one a shot and see what it looks like. And um, OK, we have the medications, but we have to uh, work on how they are displayed. Um, but otherwise, things look pretty good. Here's the best friend working well. Here's the static note. Um, and the whole note fit in there. So that's looking pretty good. Let's see if we can fix up the medications. So we bring up the class interface editor one more time. Let's look at prescriptions. We drop that down. Let's look at medications. Um, and let's drop that down. And we have, here are the slots of medications. And let's just include them. Drug price, drug warnings. Always useful when you've made changes to redo the widget layout. Um, and now you notice that medication, drug name, drug price, and drug warnings are now displayed. Let's try running this. Um, and ignore that, because I just clicked the wrong thing. Um, and there we go. So the final problem, everything looks pretty good, except the, uh, the display of the medication itself. We want to get that to look right. So let's stop and just see if we can figure out how to do that. Um, so prescriptions, we come down, medication, uh, and OK. So we have actually class instance. Ah, there we go. The primary name is the drug name. That was the problem, because we the primary and the secondary names 
are used to construct the display um, that uh, will be used. We didn't specify anything for those, so it was just simply using the standard list printed representation. But I think this will work. Let's just give it a whirl. And, and so let's try running that. Run form. And there you go. The medication is displayed with the name. There's a drop-down list, which gives all the possible names. Uh, there's a drug name. There's a drug price. Here are some warnings. Um, and now there's one other thing. So this is uh, more or less what we want. And it's um, quite similar to the one that's produced by the example that I displayed earlier, which is um, which is right, let's see, uh, here. Um, as you can see, this is slightly rearranged the static notes over there and so on. But um, uh, basically, what we have here is the same. Let's just look at the buttons for a second. These scroll through the, um, the so the next patient is Alice, and the next one is um, so on, you can move to the last one in the list, you can move to the first one in the list. And then these are the buttons that related to the database. So you can create a new instance and just a whole bunch of blanks, and you would fill things in. Um, we're not actually going to create a new instance. Uh, so that is, there's the example we brought up. I just want to show one last option from this. and. Um, just bring up the edit class interface. I just wanted to show you, let's do redo entire widget layout again, and also include table of all instances. Um, so let's run that. See, um, it's, let's see if I can fit it here. There's what's appeared is this table down here of uh, all instances. And let's run this form. Um, and yeah, well, um, somehow it's gone away from actually displaying the uh, um, data, but it was displayed last time. So, um, oh yeah, here are all the instances. Ah, the first one is uh, empty, but if we click on the second one, we get the things we saw before, and here we can scroll through them as before. But you see another class grid down here at the bottom, which uh, simply lists all the instances. And you can include that in the dialog if you want. Um, so that's basically the uh, end of the demonstration. And um, so I've just shown you how to either create a class grid or an object editor when you have a project and you um, using the class interface editor. So um, let me just run through uh, the remaining slides, which uh, sort of reemphasize the things I said. Um, both uh, class grids and object editors have a property called edited slots. And that's the property, the, uh, sorry, the things jumping around. That's the property which is specifying the various slots. And I've taken a little bit from the code which created this date of birth. And the type is a date with that format. And the label says birth date. Favorite color is um, a choice out of red, green, blue, and yellow. You capitalize the object with the print method. And you label it save color. And best friend is an instance of class patient, and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, the edited slots are precisely the thing about using the class interface editor is it writes the code for you. And um, so if we looked at the code that was generated associated with the work we would have done, we would have seen an edited slots property, and it would have had values uh, similar to this. Um, so 
you know, these uh, tools um, are designed to provide dialogues, as um, we said, which are part of your user interface, display information about class instances, and they have a standard model for display. The advantage of this, um, the advantage of any of these tools, is that you can get something which um, displays the information as part of your application quickly and easily, and then you can start working on, um, you know, making it look exactly uh, as you want, but you, you're up and going very quickly. Um, as we've demonstrated, you can either take the example and mimic the code in it, or you can use the class interface editor if you're doing a project uh, using the project system. Um, the class grid is a grid widget, and the object editor is a um, dialog, so all the uh, standard dialog customizations work for um, object okay. editor, and most of them work, most of the things that apply to grid widgets work for the class um, grid. Okay. With the so the uh, class grid and the grid widget um, have their customizations, sorry, the class grid is a grid widget, and with the exception of column sections and row sections, which are uh, defined especially for this particular kind of grid, um, uh, all the other options are available to you, uh, and a few others, which I've simply listed here, so they're on the slides if someone's using this later. Um, the class interface editor, um, <coughs> Uh, this is just going through what we did. You create a new form. You pick object editor. You specify the class you want. You uh, choose the, um, once the form comes up, you bring up the edit class, uh, the class interface editor, and that's what we saw. Then you use it to uh, customize your um, object editor, and this is what the uh, result looks like roughly. That's roughly what we constructed. Um, yep, yeah, you look at the list of slots, you click on what to include, and then you add information on what, how it's displayed. Um, now for class grid, it's just a, a widget on a normal dialog. You add the class grid, you specify the class to display as the edited class um, option on the uh, using the inspector. And then you, again, display the, um, the uh, object, uh, the <coughs> interface uh, editor dialog in order to customize it. Notice that the uh, class interface editor is somewhat uh, fewer options. There are no buttons. I didn't talk much about the buttons, but I just want to just quickly go back and mention them. Here's the list of buttons over here, and you can select the ones you want. Uh, we just accepted them all, um, and uh, obviously ones like commit and rollback are database specific and wouldn't apply if you weren't uh, using Allegro Cache um, to store your instances. Here's the simplified um, uh, editor for a class grid, which has fewer options, and here's the class grid uh, just to, this is the, the just showing it again. So uh, that's basically um, it. Um, we've uh, Hopefully you have some sense of how to use these things and why they might be useful uh, and what work is um, required to get them up and going. Uh, the documentation is listed on this page. This is um, link the links that go to our website, so it's the absolute latest documentation on these things. Um, Everything after, so it's www.prons.com, support, documentation, current, which means the current release, that's currently 8.2. And then starting from doc, if you've downloaded the documentation, there's a doc directory in your Allegro um, CL uh, um, directory. And so these um, uh, pages are available. Uh, locally on your machine if you've done that. Uh, you also look, the page, so that's the essay that describes both of these features. Uh, there are pages for the class grid class and the object editor class. 
there's a page for the class interface editor, and then in any of these there are properties, and you can go to the pages for the properties. Um, and that's it.